Joining us now is Colonel Douglas McGregor, who is one of the few voices out there telling the truth about what's happening in the war in Russia and Ukraine. So, Colonel McGregor, the senators that I talk to off the record that are in favor of this war or funding the war, they say, it's just a matter of time. Ukraine is launching a counteroffensive. We're almost there. Best money we've ever spent. Colonel, what is the truth? Well, either those uh, individuals are deranged or they're simply doing what their donors tell them to do. In most cases, my experience is there is a lot of ignorance and arrogance on the Hill. But the number one uh, overriding impulse is greed. Mm. So I think they're probably listening to their donors. And we have very powerful figures in the United States and the financial media sectors in particular uh, who want desperately to keep this war going. The Ukrainians have sustained now more than 400,000 soldiers killed in action. The cemeteries in uh, Ukraine are filling up. Uh, we don't know how many casualties they've had beyond that, in other words, wounded, but certainly several hundred thousand amputees, somewhere between 50 and 60,000 hospitals are full. Uh, the Ukrainian authorities are now essentially pressing anybody they can find into service. Russians recently captured a 71 year old man on a Ukrainian tank crew. Uh, the troops aren't trained they don't know how to use the equipment. So they're simply being herded into a meat grinder. And now the Ukrainian government has approached the Poles, wants the Polish government to help them round up 80 to 100,000 Ukrainian youth who are 18 to 25 years of age living in Poland who could be brought back to die in the war in Ukraine. Uh, frankly, if it were not for our financial aid, we, we effectively own the government, we pay for the army, uh, and uh, we keep them in, in essentially in cash. I don't I don't think this would last a day. I think this thing is effectively over and we continue to sustain it by shipping cash and equipment. And without any sort of understanding from our leaders of what does success look like, trying to continue this and push it forward into another no-win war. And it seems as if we're only extending the carnage. So could you just repeat the number? How many people have died, Colonel? I mean, we don't get any numbers. We just get estimations. I mean, how many people have died since the beginning of this war? Well, you're saying people. I don't know how many civilians have been lost. I have no idea. I just know that there are more than 400,000 dead Ukrainian soldiers. Uh, we know that because we can see the graves from satellites. Uh, we know it because we can follow the obituaries. We know it because Ukrainians and Russians come on Telegram and tell us the truth. I would say that uh, the Russians have lost 10% of what the uh, Ukrainians have, if that. In other words, probably 40,000 killed and certainly no more than 40 or 50,000 wounded. Most of the Russian wounded are returned to duty. Ukrainians have enormous difficulty with that. In fact, they leave bodies all over the battlefield. And the Russians have shut down operations several times to allow them to collect their dead. But in many cases, they, they just don't. And of course, the numbers of Ukrainian units and soldiers that are giving up is increasing daily. Most of it happens at the lowest level because these people have have no effective training. They're, they're not prepared for this and they're being sent to their deaths in what are effectively suicidal missions. So no, nobody's telling the truth in the West, but the truth is out there if you want to dig and find it. So yeah, the 400,000 people, that, that's, that's an extraordinary amount. So you have some leaders, and we're getting this tape here from Mitt Romney, and we'll play the tape in a second, but he says that this is the best money that we have spent, that this is the best investment. So, Colonel, just maybe help our audience respond to this from family members or friends, where they say, if we don't fight Putin in Ukraine, he's going to take over Europe. You've heard this, but I know it's, I know it's nauseating, but it's helpful for some people that don't do this for a living. How should one respond to such a, a, a shallow talking point? Well, you, you know, when I was uh, a young man growing up and when I first went to VMI in West Point, we were still involved in Vietnam and Lyndon Johnson and General Westmoreland and others kept telling us if we don't fight the VC and the North Vietnamese in Vietnam, we're going to be fighting them in Los Angeles and Chicago. And that's obviously nonsense. We heard the same thing about Iraq and Afghanistan, always nonsense. Now we're hearing it about Ukraine. This is just tired. Americans have to wake up and realize the extent to which they're being lied to. And as far as the best money we could spend, good God, what we've done 
is cultivate an enemy in Moscow, and I would argue in many other places in the world, all you have to do is look at the BRICS, the new members that have just joined, and the desire to de-dollarize and get out from under our financial system so that we can't bully people financially. Uh, this, this is a catastrophe for us. It'll take us decades to recover because we're going to find enemies everywhere. The Russians can escalate horizontally. Not only do we risk uh, escalation to the nuclear level if we do something stupid and launch a nuclear weapon, but worse than that, we can see Mexico, Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua, certainly Syria, other countries where our forces are at risk and engaged, where the drug traffickers and the local governments cooperate against us and our open borders. Uh, we are courting catastrophe right here inside the Western Hemisphere at home because the Russians aren't stupid. They know that they can create trouble for us all over the world. They are now going to do that because they've won this war. There's no question about it. The only question now is, do they wait for the economies in Western Europe to collapse, which is a real possibility this winter? Or uh, do they say, the hell with this, we'll just end it and march west? Uh, obviously, we would rather they didn't march west. We, we set out supposedly to prevent that, but now we've created the capability to do that. So, I, you know, I, we just have to stop listening to these uh, blowhards who know nothing about which they speak and are frankly dishonest. They're simply once again echoing the talking points their donors give them. Play cut 59. Being able to, to take an amount which equals, what, about 5% of our military budget? About, actually, less than 5% of our military budget each year to help the Ukrainians is about, about the best national defense spending I think we've ever done. We're losing no lives in Ukraine. And the Ukrainians are fighting heroically against Russia that has 1,500 nuclear weapons aimed at us. It's like, so we are, we're uh, diminishing and devastating the Russian military uh, for a, a very small amount of money relative to the, what we spend in the rest of defense. A weakened Russia is a good thing. And the best thing we can do for America is to see people who have nuclear weapons aimed at us getting weaker. Okay, so just so we understand how sick that is, what just Mitt Romney just said, he basically said that Ukrainian rank and file are a human shield for America. That I just want everyone to understand that that is just like so perverse morally, even if it was what he was saying was true, right? Even if Russia was this big enemy, the idea that we're lo losing, that we're losing no lives, but the Ukrainians are getting slaughtered, it, that, that's really demented and sick. Your reaction, Colonel, to Mitt Romney? Well, he's, he's arguing that Russia is suffering. Russia is now stronger militarily, financially, and economically, certainly than, than since the 1980s. Russia is in splendid condition. The population is 100% behind Putin. They have over 750,000 troops in and around Ukraine. They're going to go up to 1.2 million in the very near future. They have the most modern weapons they've ever had. They're well-organized, well-led, well-disciplined. So the notion that somehow or another we've harmed Russia is a big lie. In the meantime, the only thing we've succeeded in doing is murdering the Ukrainian nation. We've destroyed the country. I don't think this nation is going to recover for years, for decades. That's his great achievement. This, this man is either demented or he's just a pathological liar. He certainly, you know, borders on psychopath uh, and certainly is a sociopath. We're, we're consigning millions of people to misery in Ukraine in perpetuity. And we're told that we need to continue to spend and send more money. And so just can you just build this out, Colonel? This is not being covered in the West, but Russia is actually in a better position economically because of the war. How is that possible? Because the conventional Washington, D.C. narrative is we apply sanctions, we isolate them, we impoverish them. But actually, Russia had a basically a summer of prosperity. Uh, the Russians I know in America, they say their relatives back in Moscow love Putin. They're richer, they're happier than even they were a decade ago. Uh, well, you have to keep in mind that the Russians took great pains to disengage as much as possible from us. They tried to shed as many U.S. Treasury bonds as possible. They got rid of a, as much of our currency as they could. And they've been doing business as often as possible in, in rubles, in other words, their own currency. Now, as part of BRICS, they're bringing in new members. And one of those new members 
starting in January, of course, is Saudi Arabia. That means that the Saudis will be doing business with India, China, Russia, Brazil, and other countries, not in dollars. I mean, you're, you're staring at the end of the petrodollar. The end of the petrodollar is the first decisive step in the direction of eliminating the dollar as reserve currency. We're going to have serious problems economically as a result of this. We've got to stop lying to people. Uh, this, this is awful. The, the, the Russians have profited enormously. Everything has backfired on these frauds in Washington. And that's what this Mr. Romney is. He's a shameless fraud. It's interesting. Joe Biden attempted to rally the world behind Ukraine and break Russia. Instead, he's breaking America. Instead, it's oh, our absolutely. dollar that's being broken, and Russia is actually stronger. So all the experts at the CIA, all the experts in the permanent war machine of Washington, D.C., tell us, okay, this war is terrible, sanctions, tariffs, trust us. And in reality, we now have the emergence of BRICS. Quickly, just kind of what is BRICS and the significance of the new member countries? Well, the new member countries, uh, including Saudi Arabia, are all agreed that they are going to do business with each other uh, in currencies other than dollars. They're also agreeing tacitly to the long-term strategic goal of pegging currency to gold. And of course, India, China, uh, Russia, uh, Saudi Arabia in particular, the Emirates, all of them have amassed great quantities of gold so that the currencies can actually be traded as pegged to gold. All of this puts us at risk because, remember, we're entirely dependent on the fiat financial system. And we have been able to compel everyone to use our dollar. People have to borrow in dollars and spend in dollars. This is about to end. Nobody is going to allow us to pass our debt on to them any longer. So the That's real right. question is, how, how much longer do we get away with anything? I mean, the, look, look at the... Uh, Just stay right there the one second. Just one second. We'll be right back. Colonel Douglas McGregor continues. Colonel, please finish your thought. Sorry about that. <clears throat> no, I just think the audience needs to understand because they hear constantly, oh, the economy's fine. Uh, everything's going gangbusters and we're going to be sitting in clover over the next year. What they need to understand right now, which is very, very serious, it's not just the BRICS and the new members that come in in January. They're going to trade in their own currency and ultimately as a long-term strategic goal want to peg everything to gold. It's the fact that our treasuries now in terms of yield are going up, but the prices of our treasury bonds are going down. Now, why is this? Obviously it's the interest rates that are rising, but as uh, people both in our own domestic banking system and foreign banking systems look at U the U.S. treasuries, they've been buying for now almost two decades. They look at these and they're not worth anything because they bought these things when the interest rates were near zero. All of a sudden now they're dealing with interest rates that are rising rapidly. So how do we sell our bonds? Well, we drop the prices to the point where they're worth almost nothing as it is. And the Fed cannot add that much more toxic debt to what it's already got on its books. So everything has to be viewed against that background economically. So, so, Colonel, you mentioned something to our team in the break that I find really interesting. You said it took about five years for the American public to turn against the war in Vietnam, but this is at a much accelerated timeline. Probably started at 10 to 15 percent of Americans that wanted nothing to do with involvement. Now it's 55 percent. It's 95 percent of the conservative base. Walk us through this. This is a promising development. Well, remember that from 1965 until almost 1969, our media stood behind the Johnson administration and its lies about what was really happening in Vietnam. What was really happening was very different from what was reported. And obviously the Tet Offensive threw that into sharp relief. So then the media at the time said, you know, we, we've got to stop lying. Let's start telling the truth. It made them unpopular with diehards who thought we were actually fighting communism when we weren't. Communism was not really the issue in Vietnam. It was a civil war we had involved ourselves in. But today you have a different phenomenon. Today the media is universally in the West backing this insanity against Russia. Yes. They're part of the same lobby that wants to essentially destroy the regime and then divide the country and sell off its uh, resources at bargain basement prices and enrich themselves. In other words, the ruling political class in Washington is bound up with the people who run finance and the media in the United States who are dominating 
all the policy making. But the American people are smart enough to figure out, wait a minute, why are we shipping all of this overseas? What about all the people that don't have jobs in the United States? What about the growing numbers of homeless? What about the fact that our borders are open and we're adding 2.3 million people about whom we know nothing, people that we probably can't employ, and, and more important, will never assimilate. So frankly speaking, the American people have figured this out. The problem is that there are still too many listening to the lies. They haven't wakened up to the fact that you can't trust the government. Quite, quite a concept. And so as, as the public opinion continues to move, see, and the, the Democrat Party's all messed up. They used to be the anti-war party. Now they're completely on board for this, which is really interesting. And the Republican Party actually has more people out speak, speaking out against it. Just final thought, minute and a half remaining, is one of the reasons why the West is so against Russia is because they're not totally on board for this LGBTQ stuff, that they stand against some of these kind of social liberal... Imp is, is, that, is that kind of a, a component of this that doesn't always get get covered? Oh, no, I think it is a component. I mean, clearly Russia has said, we're not opening our borders. We're not yes. going to subject our population to the influx of millions of foreigners who are coming to Russia not to join us, not to work with us, not to assimilate, but to take us over. And they've looked at Europe and they say, well, if Germany and France are examples of success stories for globalism, we don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> then, of course, you have the underlying foundation of Russian Orthodox Christianity. And the people that are currently leading the charge against Russia utterly hate Christianity. That's they right. despise it. Let's be frank. You know, we're talking about people that are atheists, nihilists, Marxists, uh, and ultimately globalists. It's all bound up together. It's one sick, perverse ideology. And wokeism is perversion. The Russians know it. We know it. Why are we pretending it's not? Colonel Douglas McGregor, wonderful commentary. Thank you for being one of the lone voices of sanity in the midst of this tragedy that we're involved in. Thank you so much. Okay, Charlie. Thank you.